Hey, yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you for your work this week. Um, just looking through your stuff. This I like. This is great. I like that you're studying the types of rocks and the shapes and the just the look of this, you know, using the trilobite kind of um, the reference with the trilobites and all that. And then combining that with the kind of riverbed stuff and the rock with um, the kind of porous volcanic rock here. Um, really interesting. It all works to me as a general direction. Now, the thing is, is that, so these, these are all nice explorations and you are really starting to understand in, especially in the, the sketches up top that are not in compositions. Um, you're starting to understand how shape can communicate different kind of ideas and different feelings. Um, now with the compositions themselves, I think you might be losing a little bit of that personality um, by focusing on lighting. You're not really, the lighting and all that is not really meant to be something that we're focusing on this week in particular. This one actually I like a lot. I think you're really starting to get it with this one. Carrying the personality over from this to here, I think you're doing that. Now, um, I personally would rather see more designing and less rendering. So let me show you what that means in particular. What that means is Something that you have in your original sketches that I think you might be missing is a little bit of that sense of large, medium, and small. Okay, so large, medium, and small. Uh, the volcanic rock specifically has a very nice, if you notice, large shapes medium shapes, small, 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 small. So how do we incorporate that into our design? Well, compositionally, we definitely want to lead our eye to the focal point here. Um, I would say, thinking about maybe some kind of a large, if you say this is like your large shape, which is to me, what you're doing is kind of repeating the same general shape over and over and over. If that's like your large shape, then you'd want to incorporate, maybe make the, some of them smaller so they become medium shapes. So you're making one larger to make a large, making some of them smaller to make medium, and then you make some of them really small to incorporate small shapes, right? And then that whole thing becomes bigger as it comes up front. But you want to lead our eye back in some path to the main composition. Maybe it's that, maybe it's this. Something that's interesting that carries our eye and doesn't just make our path of vision do that. A big part of composition is moving our eye in a way through the composition, creating movement. So to me, in this particular composition, because you're doing that, it would make sense for an S-curve sort of thing to be happening. If not an S-curve, then at least a curve of some point. We don't want to just go straight back. I guess you could, but it's not as interesting, especially with this organic movement. The other thing is the, the porous kind of uh, volcanic rock, to make the scale feel really big, I would say probably we probably want to shrink down the general scale of it to here. So for example, it, and I would be totally fine with doing this myself if this was my own work, I would take some of these sketches and I would just literally put them right in. and try to incorporate how we can use those. So you say, okay, if this is a field of, when I say a field, I just mean this is an area where we have using, where we're using some of that volcanic rock. Obviously, if I repeat that amount of detail over this whole area, that's gonna get so noisy and terrible. It's just not gonna work. So as a start, I could use some of that on the corner, but that just gives us an idea of our general scale. So if that's the, if the biggest, the big shapes are this, then that means we need to make clusters of tiny little shapes too. And I don't mean just make polka dots all over this thing. I just mean <clears throat> as a general idea for the scale, how you're going to show 
that pattern, you know, or that that type of um, shape language happening, you want to indicate a little bit of it. I think it would be more important to show the big shapes happening and how we're using straights versus curves. How these forms kind of all connect together. But then incorporating little bits here and there of that volcanic kind of stuff. So showing how the pits and valleys kind of happen on the form. Okay, and showing how to turn form. If you have a log that has dots all over it, in the when we're looking right at it, they become kind of circular shapes, right? Halfway, they get squished about halfway, and all the way at the edge, they're completely flat. So it's this idea. As ellipses, as we're turning the form, that's what happens. So the more polka dots, or in our case, the more pores in the rock, they become closer together and they become little slivers along the edge. And as it's in the center, the apex of the form, they are more open and more like the original shape, circles. Okay, so you want that to turn the form, then that's the way you render that. So again, the, the smart way to do it would be to put more of the detail on the edge and let it shrink down into kind of little slivers and you can kind of sketch over it and make it feel noisy. And as we get into the center of the form, you're gonna to wanna to have more open kind of shapes, more uh, spread apart, more circular, and then as they move to the edges, more detail and more of that. That'll help turn the form with texture. Obviously what I'm doing is a very sloppy drawing, but that is the general rule and that's kind of what we want to do here. So seeing as this is all about design, I think that is probably your best bet is going back and trying to bring a little bit of the character from these sketches into the finals. And really these would have been good enough to turn in for the compositions. I would just expect them to be a little bit further along, a little bit better. These paintings are okay, but they're so loose, they're almost showing me less than those little sketches are. You know, again, repetitive. It's okay for things to be repetitive, especially in a trilobite when they would be, but find a way to break them up. Find a way to maybe make some of the divots less strong so, so they don't all just have the same exact line weight. Maybe try and space them out a little bit. Even nature is a little bit imperfect. And if it's kind of alien, then maybe it, it isn't perfect. Maybe there's spines that are overlapping that show us the form, you know, of how this thing sits on itself. But, you know, start with a little sketch, fine, but I think for you, you really need to show us more of the of what's going on, the detail, the um, the, the really the design, more exploration. And, and you're, again, making kind of polka dots evenly spaced. Bring back some of that really great stuff from your early sketches and show how the large, medium, and small breakups work, how there's little bits of porous, you know, smaller little things close together. And then we get a bit of space where we get some room to breathe. And then there's, again, some bits of medium size holes and then maybe a cluster of smaller ones around that on the other side or something just to break it up. But that's what's going to make this stuff seem interesting. Some more dynamic shapes. Okay. Thank you.